is something that can also play into theory of mind, but we find it also plays into centered thinking. And so centered thinking, or the ability to decenter your thinking, is something that we continue to struggle with in the pre-operational thought period, around ages three or four or five. And we can see this in activities like the card sort task, or in just any activities where we're classifying things. But the card sort task, what it tends to work with is cards that you can sort either by shape or by color. And children are randomized in terms of which they sort first. Now, whichever they are told to do first, they can usually do quite well. At this point, their assimilation is down, they know their shapes, they know their colors. And if we tell them to sort a group of cards by shape, they can do it. If they have to sort a group of cards by color, they can do it. But what happens is if then we switch the rules, if we previously told them they had to sort by color and now they are to sort by shape, they continue to sort by color and they continue to sort by what they were first told. This has to do with their inhibition or be able to, you know, sort of stop their impulses, but it also has to do with their centered thinking. And that's because now you're asking them to think about these cards in two dimensions, in colors and in shape, and it's hard for them to focus on it in those two very distinct ways. We can also see this centered thinking when it comes to conservation. So conservation is something that Piaget studied a lot and it's still really fun to examine in kids today. It does hold up pretty accurately. And so this is the idea, conservation, and so conservation is the idea that matter cannot be created or destroyed and you can't just create something out of nothing. But because of magical thinking in the pre-operational thought stage, it can be hard for us to comprehend that, especially when appearances change. In a very classic example of conservation, what happens is the conservation of volume or liquid volume. So you have two glasses that are the same shape and you put the same amount of liquid into them. And you ask a child, is there more in this glass, more in this glass, or are they the same? And you make sure that the child thinks they're the same amount. If there's more in one, you pour it back and forth until it's the same amount. And then you take a long skinny glass. You pour the liquid from one of the shorter glasses into the long skinny glass. You haven't removed any liquid, you haven't added any liquid, but you just change the shape of the, but you just shape, but you just change the shape of the container. Now you've one short glass and one tall glass. So you ask the child, is there more in this glass, more in this glass, or are they the same? And most often because of centered thinking, we cannot pay attention to both the height and the width of the glass. And the height seems to be more salient to us. So the infant will say there's more liquid in the tall skinny glass. You pour it back into the wider glass, the wide short glass, and you say, well, now is there more or less? Well, now they're the same again. How come it's the same again? I'm not, and, and then they, they believe that somehow the pouring is adding or removing liquid. So this is also a struggle with reversibility. They're having a hard time rewinding and, and they're saying, well, maybe there was always more, pour it back. Well, maybe there was always less, pour it back. And it's hard for them to understand. So this is conservation of volume. What Piaget referred to as conservation of mass, which technically could also be volume, was with Play-Doh. You would take Play-Doh and you make it into two little balls of Play-Doh about the same size. And you ask the child, is there more Play-Doh in this ball, more Play-Doh in that ball, or are they roughly the same? And once it's the same, you take one of the balls of Play-Doh and you squish it down like a little hamburger patty or a pancake. Now you have one pancake and one meatball, and you say, is there more Play-Doh in this one or this one, or are they the same? Again, due to centered thinking, we can't pay attention to the width and the height of the Play-Doh. So children will say, if, if you're depending on how you're holding them, if you're holding them like this, they'll say the round one has more versus if you hold up the pancake one like this, it's now taking a bigger area, it's flatter. And so they might say the pancake has more Play-Doh. And so this is the idea that they, they just can't pay attention to the two dimensions. You can take the pancake Play-Doh, you can roll it back into a ball and they'll say, well, now there's the same Play-Doh again. How did that happen? So they're struggling with the notion of conservation due to centered thinking, and they are also struggling with reversibility. We can also see this centered, we can also see this conservation play out in a couple different ways. We can see it with the conservation of number. And so this is the idea if we take candies or coins and we make two rows of five, what happens here is you can make the rows of five neat and tidy and lined up one to one, two to one, they're all lined up in nice rows. And when it's like that, you say, is there more in this line, more in this line, or are they the same? Especially when kids can count to five, they'll count them, they'll say they're the same. Then you take one of the rows, you don't add or remove any coins, but you spread them out. You make the gaps between them larger. And then you ask them, is there more in the top row, more in the bottom row, or are they the same? Even if they can count to five, they will count to five, but say, 
but there's more in the bottom row. There's more. I don't understand how there is, but there's more. And that's because they're attending to length more than they're attending to number. We can, of course, see this in non-numbered things. If you just take two straws or two pencils, and if you line them up end to end, they'll say they're the same length. But if you make one start before the other one starts, so one ends after the other one ends, they can't attend to both the start and the end at the same time. And depending on if they're more exposed to languages that read right to left or left to right, they're going to say one of these straws or one of these pencils is longer. And finally, one of my favorites is when children are jealous that maybe you're going to eat two cookies and they're only going to eat one cookie. And they say, you have two and I only have one you can break their cookie in two and say, is it fair now? And they'll say, yeah, I have two and you have two. Now it's fair. This also works with chunks of chocolate bars, or this works with parts of a graham cracker. You can give them two, you can give them one piece of a graham cracker and snap it in two, and you can have two portions of the graham cracker. And they'll count, say, oh, I have two, you have two, now it's equal. They do catch on to that one a little bit earlier than they catch on to the conservation of volume and mass, but it is really cute. So most of these areas of conservation we start to master by the time we're five, five and a half at the latest. These sometimes trick us through adulthood. For instance, when you're not thinking about it, we tend to think there is more liquid in a tall skinny glass, and restaurants have been known to use this trick to make us feel like we're getting more of a beverage. We also know that there is this there's also this advanced notion of conservation where we actually shape the Play-Doh into crescents or into balls. And then we ask if we were to insert the Play-Doh into a glass, would it raise the level of the glass up by the same amount if it's shaped as a ball versus shaped as a crescent? And it will raise the glass up to the same level if it's the same amount of Play-Doh, regardless of the Play-Doh shape, uh, as long as there's not a hollow uh, inside of the Play-Doh, as long as it's a solid piece of Play-Doh, it will raise the glass up to the same level. But most of us are fooled by that and think that a crescent-shaped Play-Doh will not raise it as much as a ball-shaped Play-Doh. And so conservation is a really fun thing to study. And it's really fun to see the explanations and the, the magical thinking in those ages between two, three, four, five. The, the explanations can be really fascinating.